Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. We are um, at 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm still wearing the same club I've been wearing for a few days. So excuse me, you know, it's not a fashion show. I'm here to talk about the beer. And what a beer I've got to talk to you about today. It is coming from the great Thornbridge Brewery. Now, I've been um, having the beer 52 box, but I've just cancelled that for a bit. Nothing wrong with what I was getting brilliant service, everything else. But I've now moved over to uh, Thornbridge's Beer Club. And in their December box came this beer. This bad boy. The Jaipur X Imperial IPA alcohol content, 10% ABV in a 330ml can. Now, normally I'd turn my nose up at a 330ml can if I had a Jaipur. I'd want the 500 mil. I don't, I, it does come in cans, does it? I can't remember. Uh, I always have it in the bottle, that's why. Um, I'd want two of them. But at 10%, half past two on a Thursday afternoon, I'm happy with this, especially because I've already had a pint of uh, my Everard Sleigh Bell because I needed to get it drank. Um, but anyway, I've been in contact with Thornbridge prior to this coming to me to ask them, you know, because we know that Jaipur is their flagship beer of 2005. Um, and even after all this time and all these crafted, amazing um, sort of like IPAs and, um, you know, crafted sort of like stuff that, that that's available with all the single hop stuff and everything that's about, it's one of those you can always come back to it and go, Do you know what, that's a banger. You know, it's regarded as the first UK craft IPA that came out because it was brewed with a load, a load of US hops at the time where that was very unusual. I'm just scanning down at my notes. I have made notes. I sort of know it, but I don't want to like forget as I'm talking. You know, it's like it's like being on Popmaster or something like that, isn't it? It's like oh, 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 oh. It's, it's a lot easier when you when you're at home. Well, I'm trying to talk fluently to you guys, and I don't want to forget. So anyway, so we know what Jayapur at 5.9 ABV is all about. It's a blemming fantastic beer. Um, really bitter as well. Almost like more on the West Coast sort of side, side of the bitterness. Anyway, so I asked the, the lovely people at Thornbridge, right, okay, I said, how are you getting the higher alcohol content on this beer? Because what worried me about this beer was, okay, Let's just get some more alcohol out of it. But what happens if it's just all alcohol and not really much flavour? It's there's got to, there's got to be a climb in there. There's got to be an, there's got to be that balance in there. So the fantastic people messaged me back and gave me a world of information. So I'm going to share that with you now. So higher alcohol. I'm reading from my notes there. Higher alcohol means that they need more sugar to begin with, which is obvious, isn't it? with the yeast to consume and turn into alcohol and the CO2. That, that is sort of like, you know, obvious, but where's that sugar coming from, right? So the source of this sugar is our low-color Maris Otter malt, which they use in the original Jayapur, um, which is great. It's, a, it's a, a lovely malt, something that I like to see in a beer. Um, so their house yeast, and they've actually told me what the yeast they use, but I don't need, I don't need to quote that, has a high alcohol tolerance. So it can ferment up to those levels without being killed off by the high alcohol. So you don't want a yeast that like, as you then start to really, like, you just make it work too hard. So their, their yeast can cope with what they're expecting it to do. So they're banging in more sugars from the malts and their yeast is being able to sort of like ferment that properly. But here's the thing. They genuinely add a few days to the fermentation time in order for it to complete fully. So more like eight to nine days than the normal five to six days. So this is for me. Me and words are terrible, right? Okay. So they're doing the brewing of this beer, for eight of the fermentation of this beer for eight to nine days, which is... Brilliant. Loads more sugar from the Maris Otter malts. <laughs> more time, great yeast, boom. 
So they like to restrain the fermentation temperature of the first 72 hours as well to avoid too many higher alcohols being produced, which can lead to a petrol like flavor, which is one of those sort of flavors. And one of the, the last thing I hate about high alcohol beers is when it is just alcohol. Um, but anyway, but hops wise, they've added more than twice what goes into normal Jayapur, but keep the same varieties in it so that it still has that traditional Jayapur flavor. This version, they've made more hazy. So to bring the hop shine through, bang on. So we've got more malts. We've got higher alcohol. We've got a really great yeast that's going to restrain that alcohol from being petrol-like. They've done, a, they've done a, um, a temperature control, a variant in temperature control fermentation. And we have got some serious hops in there. And they're letting them hops just like filter through a little bit, a bit hazy, and um, yeah, to get more of that hop flavor. So I'm excited. This thing's excited. This glass is excited to, to have this on. Um, my normal glass that I use is excited. Let's get this bad boy into this glass. Thornbridge Brewery, do not let me down. It smells pretty decent. Oh my God. Just instantly, grapefruit. Now, oh, now the thing is with grapefruit, me, I'm not a big, huge, si oh, Ooh, I should have swallowed that out. I don't think there's anything in there. I'm almost tempted to pour a bit back in just to swill it around, just in case. But I had a little momentary lapse of reason there where I should have left a bit in, swilled the can. But it don't matter because it still looks hazy, doesn't it? It still looks nice. Um, it's absolutely brilliantly looking in the in the glass there. Really straw coloured, really smelly. Wow, absolutely really smelly. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. No, I've got to do it. I'm sorry, I've got to do it. I'm, I'm, I'd be absolutely gutted if the stuff in there I've missed. <laughs> it's pouring the beer back in. You know, I, I, some people do give their. Uh, comments on uh, on the youtube channel that you do think to yourself like right okay fair enough a comment's a comment isn't it but anyway so i'll probably get that no you can't throw the beer back in the can what you're doing but anyway i don't care it's all fun it's all banter if you see me go a bit cockeyed it's because i'm looking up to the mic just to make sure the light's on i know it's on because the blue light's on anyway so i'm not a massive citra fan um but that is giving me some booming grapefruit noses there. And I love grapefruit. So when you talk about citra, I can't, I can't really, you know, I, I love everything to do with citra. I love, I love every, all the citra fruits. I love them all. But for some reason, if you make a beer just pure citra, then it's not for me. I like, I like it more blended, a little bit more in the, in, in the background um you know more balance within the other flavors whereas this has got a really nice grapefruit forward smell a little bit danky as well which is i, I mean when i popped the can open i smelt it when i've done it there so you know filling the room with aromas really a beautiful pillar soft head white head probably tiny tiny off white head um whew. but yeah absolute normal grapefruit tropical fruits all that sort of stuff that you get in this beer we know jayapur well this is jayapur x let's get into this i'm excited people i'm excited cheers Yes! Boom! Wow, where's the alcohol? Yes! <laughs> wow! I've got two cans of this. With the um with the, the beer club, you get five beers. 
and you get two of each. I've got two cans of this. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Wow. I wish I'd have probably put both of them down here. Um, you know, we oh, my God. It. What a fantastic job they've done of this. Wow. Oh, if you like Thornbridge's Jayapur, then you are going to literally want to take this away and just hide it and and just live with it and just not let anybody else have it. That is absolutely fabulous. There is no horrible alcohol taste in that at all. This would be this would be fun to almost if you was to make this ice cold. So would you, would you like a giant pour? It's five point nine percent, so be careful. This is almost like you could give it give that to them if they've never had one before, and they would never know that it was ten percent. But you would know that it's a different that it's got it is an imperial. Yeah, it is ramped up in everything. The hops are well ramped up, you know. Really is, really hop forward and beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, even with all the stouts I've been drinking just, just, just lately, I still don't just drink stouts all the time. I do have a pale ale, a blonde beer, you know. Or just get yourself a nice, I get myself nice mainstream beers that I've always loved. And I just drink them in between. Excuse me for the snivel. Um, so, you know, your palate's always been sort of like washed about with different, different, it's not like I've just been drinking stout, 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 stout. So this is going to surprise me really. And I'm going to over-exaggerate the flavors and the, and the hopness in here. No, this is, whew, look at it. And I love the fact they've made it, they've made it hazy. I love that. Brilliant. Mmm. Oh, now the thing is, they're using that low-coloured Maris Otter. Oh my God! After that beer and this, oh, this is and this is where I'm coming to because I've just I've got that. <coughs> I'm a little bit hyper. I'm I'm excited about this. I hope this ain't a one-off. I hope they continue to do mm. this. But yeah, the uh, the low-coloured Maris Otter malts are there as they've described it, to make it light and drinkable with a balanced sweetness. Now, now the hops and all that crash has got into me. I can now concentrate on finding the malts, which I did do. And it is a perfectly balanced beer. I love, oh. Oh, I love, oh. It's such a... And, the, and I tell you what as well. Oh, now, wow, you wouldn't think you were drinking a 10% beer. No way. And that is what makes this beer absolutely banging. Absolutely. Because what I am getting, I am getting that warmth, sweetness there. Of course, it's, it's tingled me cheeks a little bit there. I actually had like some little pins and needles come and, and the cheeks there but i'm getting that that warmth from the from the malt sweetness but i'm not getting no alcohol this is so easy to drink it's incredible 10 percent abv and it's literally going down like a lead balloon and look at the head retention as well I wish that that like I could get out this habit of constantly swilling beers around, but it's such a I don't know. It's like a beer in a glass just looks fantastic, doesn't it? It just looks if you get a good beer like this, it looks amazing. And what an absolutely fantastic beer this is! Now the thing is with me, or well, the great the sort of the grapefruit. What am I getting there? So it's a really nice bitter. This is a really nice bitter beer. And it is right sat back there at the end that makes you want to drink 
more of this. It's not drying you out because there's a lovely sweetness that is just, just in harmony with it. So it's not there. It's just everything is there in a nice balanced way. But the, the bitterness, it keeps you, you know, it just keeps you wanting more. This is quaffable, this is. This is just so easy to drink. And you know what as well? I always find when you get a really, really special, really nice, great beer like this, that is just so nice and so... It's like if you've gone anywhere. I mean, well, me, I am a waffler, right? So I, I, I yabby, 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 yabby. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I'm in company, I tend to be a listener because I like and I engage in conversations and, and I don't interrupt and I don't, you know, I have good conversations. But when I'm on my own or if somebody is asking me to describe something I really like, I really, you know, if I went on a ride and it was brilliant, I wouldn't just go, yeah, it's great. I'm like, oh my God, it was fantastic when you went around the corner, the G-force on oh, and the acceleration on it was absolutely incredible. You know, I'm not one for going, yeah, it's great. You know, so when I find a beer like this that is just fantastic, I can yabba, yabba, yabba. yabba. I, I, I watch myself back when I edit these videos and I think, oh my God, Lee, you know what I mean? You're just like, and I hate calling myself Lee on camera here because that is like my... Um, that's my you're in trouble name type thing. Well, not my my, my my wife calls me Lee. My my family call me Lee. My friends call me Spenno. <laughs> so I like I I've been known as Spenno throughout my whole life, and amongst other things. So sometimes I quote my actual real name, uh, which ain't a bad thing. Um, but wow. Now the problems problem with these videos is when you're doing these reviews. You've almost got to do them quick. You've got to get them done because you want people to watch them. But I always think to myself, no. If I want to bang on about this beer, I'm going to bang on about this beer because it excites me. And I want to be bouncing around excited when I'm in my 70s. I don't want to not be excited about stuff. And when something excites me, I'm going to go on about it. I'm going to rave about it. When something don't excite me, like some of the some of the Christmas beers that I've had that I've just decided to give some of the ones that are just there every single day of the week a go. No, I'm just flat about them. But when something like this excites me, I'm going to waffle on about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to make you look at me and think, Jesus Christ, I want that beer. Give it me now. You know, that's what I want to do. That is the job I'm trying to do here. And it's not even a job. It's just a hobby, it's just something I love to do. But I want you guys to watch this, and I want you to be tapping on Thornbridge's website now. Jesus Christ, I need to get this beer, you know. And I'm not getting nothing from these guys, and I'm not doing it for any any reason other than I love breweries that do good beers. I love bottle shops that that get in great beers so we can buy them. I love pubs that that give you great beer and micro pubs with their tap rooms and micro breweries rather with their tap rooms i love all them places i don't want them to go i don't want them to disappear so most of the people that do what we do do it to shout about these to just keep the love going you know and um you know a lot of us are drinking at home these days we really are um and that but also I do like to go out and support the pubs as well, you know, so I do a lot of drinking at home, but I also do go out and, um, you know, and, and if I wasn't working so many hours, I'd go out more, you know, but there's no good me going out for an evening, getting in at half past 11 when I'm getting up at half past four in the morning. It's just not, 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 not much good. Um, so but anyway, we're just shouting about these people, these breweries and when the brewery as well, when I message them and they take the time to get back to me and give me a full breakdown of the beer um, and how it's brewed and everything, then it makes it even more worth the love because they're proud of their beer. They're proud of what they've done here and they're proud to share it with other people. So that's why I'm bringing it to you guys.
So for those keen, eagle-eyed viewers, you would have noticed I was holding that like that. Because even with this IPA, this Imperial IPA, um, I still want to get this up to a temperature where I can where I can get a bit more deeper into the malts. The hops are just so forward. It's like it's almost like I'm chewing the hops that are in this. You know when you know when you get a hop flower and you do that and you smell it. Um, oh, it's like I, I almost feel like I've got the alpha acids, the, the the actual oils in my mouth. I feel all that. This this is an emotional beer. You can soon ramp up alcohol content, but you've got to balance it with the flavours. So, you know. Oh, my God. What time is it? I've got guests coming around at five o'clock. Oh, it's ten to three. Oh, I'm almost tempted to go and get the other one to see what it's like a little bit warmer. Oh, my word. Um, shall I do it? What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll be back in a second. So I'm back. Um, so that involved a trip up to the house uh, to fetch this second can. Like I say, you get two cans. And this one has just been out in, in what we've got as a carport. It's all, it's all coming down. It's a right mess in there. But, it, but the thing is, it's airy and uh, the wind blows through. So if it's freezing outside, you can, you can go outside and the temperature will probably be like zero outside. But it's probably like three degrees in the carport. It's got some sort of shelter. So, I've, God, I'm so anal, but I brought the temperature probe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one, which has warmed up anyway. And I'm actually going to put that glass there. I'm going to get another glass. I've got to make sure it's the same glass. So I've got another glass, clean glass. I'm going to crack this open. This is, oh, the actual, what I'm getting left in my palate now is wonderful. It's so sweet with the malts, but not sweet. You know, we talk about an imperial stouts when you get that molasses stuff, and it's like that toffee type of, burnt brown sugary type of thing but it's not sweet it's not like you put sugars in it or anything like that it's a real good natural sweetness the sweetness from this beer is coming from their malts and probably one of my favorite type of malts where you get all that toffee caramel and that real bready sort of character you know you get all them toasted sort of oh i'm not going to make the mistake this time i'm going to make sure i'm going to swirl this can out and really swell it out. I mean, I'm talking. There's a lot left in there, and I can I can hear the liquid turning into foam. Look at this. Look at this beer. Look at it. Now that is what I am talking about. I'm going to just crush this can now. Just to look at this. There's even more in there to be given. I'm just going to like let that. I mean, seriously, there was years ago, honestly, if somebody poured me a bit like that, I'd laugh at them. I would absolutely laugh at them. But you know, now, no, I'm not going to even say studying beer. I've never studied anything in my life. I'm useless. I'm not academic at all. These are my tools. But, you know, but the one thing is I've learned about beer over the years and um, and with all the craft beer and everything else, that like the foam is one of the most perfect part of the beer because you know what that foam is there to do. It's there. It is beer. I mean, people, you know, that is a 330 mil can in there. Whether that beer is there with a little bit of a head or there with a great big head. It's still the same amount of beer. You've not lost anything. Okay. You know, there might be a tiny little bit of foam in there that needs to revert back to liquid and then dribble out the can. But you know, don't be don't be fooled. You're not losing anything. It's not moving at all. Look at it. It's well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't expect this to be as good as it is. I really didn't. I've got to be honest. I didn't expect this 
to be as crafted as it is. When you start putting IPAs at 10%, you, you, you're dabbling a little bit with danger, aren't you? You know, you're ramping it up to that level of alcohol. If you don't balance it out with the flavours, then you might as well be drinking, oh, what is it, a white lightning? Or I don't, I don't know what it's called. You know, when it's just all alcohol and no flavour. Um, so look, you know, so even though I've poured that with a huge head, it will dissipate a bit, but I just know with the cleanliness of these glasses, I'm not um, as thick as you drunk I am. The cleanliness of these glasses, you're getting an absolute no nucleation points and a lovely foamy head that, that holds its retention. So anyway, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be spano anal here. I'm gonna put this this dented. The first can was like before I got a bit who, like a hooligan and the second can was a little bit uh, more sort of like ramped up. So I'm going to do what, you know what I'm like. You know what I'm like. You watch the channel, you know what I'm like. So what we got? Fantastic. Right, so this beer is starting off at 11.5 degrees. So I did say, didn't I, that I think the outside temperature... It's around about 10 degrees. So I've brought the can in, I've held it, I've poured it, it's been sat there a minute. 11.5 degrees is a start off temperature for a 10% IPA. People think I'm crazy. I, I want to have this beer at 3 degrees, not 11.5 degrees. However, when the beer's this good. So yeah, so having a beer at 11.5 five degrees seems crazy these beers want to be around about three degrees but the thing is i am a little crazy i know that this beer wants to be three degrees to have a massive hop smash but then the malts will just come in to balance the beer to just just to just to settle the bitterness down from the hops and things like that wow like the, the first can i had was real grapefruit now it's a little bit more Probably because the, 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 the malts are just shining through a little bit more. Like a little bit of lemon, like, and I didn't smell it before, but I am actually getting a little bit of lemonness out of that. The hops have warmed up a bit, so they, they take on a little bit more of a different character, which I love. I love temp temperature control in my beer. I, I, I love it. It's the only way to really start from the top to the bottom and get all the flavours that are in these beers. Um Temperature around about 11 degrees, the, the, the atmospheric temperature, which is actually outside at the moment. And this beer is still doing well because the flavours are still there, you know. Absolutely amazing. There's a really back addition of malt. It just hangs. I still don't know where the alcohol is. Absolute fist pump. It's like... Seriously, what a fantastic job. The only reason I know there's this level of alcohol in there is because some of the words that are coming out of my mouth, some of the some of the things I'm saying, some of the ways I'm putting across what I'm trying to say, so, like just the way I'm feeling. But honestly, I can't I can't get to grips to where the alcohol is. I can't find it. It's it's it has got a warming. I know I know it, it's in here. I know it's in there. It's got it has got a nice warmingness about it. But your mind is telling you this is an IPA. It needs to be cold. It don't want to warm you up. You know? So it's almost like they're taking the meat. It's like, no, this is this is four percent really, you know. But no, it ain't. You know, you can tell it you tell you can tell it's a you can tell it's a, a high a high ABV beer for the for the actual flavours and the hit and the warmth the, it, and it's still there on the back of my throat, you know. So no, I don't I don't want to say this is like drinking a four point because the sleigh bell that I've been drinking was a four point five percent beer and I drank it all day on Christmas Day. I didn't even know it touched the sides. But if I drank this all day on Christmas Day, then well, I'd think I'd wake up the next morning thinking I was Santa and I'd probably get on a sleigh somewhere and. Uh, yeah, end up at the North Pole. Wow. Right, I've got to end this video here because otherwise I'm going to just yabber and yabber and yabber and yabber.
but phew, absolute Thornbridge, thank you so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually message you and just tell you I've done this video. And I want you to watch it and I want you to tell me that I've described this beer correctly. And if I haven't, I want you to put in the comments where I've gone wrong. But for me, this is Jayapur ramped up. This is an excited Jayapur. This is Jayapur like, at, at a party. Oof, oof. You know, you got the normal Jayapur in the corner, sat down, just chilling out, you know, chilling out. And then the Jayapur X is like, yeah, come on. Let's, it's a rave, man. Let's get going, dudes. Let's sort this shit out. So, yeah, that's what this is. However, it's a, also a chill out, beautiful, well balanced, really well balanced beer. I, I, I talk about seesaw beers, and this is like literally the hops. The hop it is hop forward, but the hops are not in. They're not. They're not too much. You know what I mean? They are. They are really there. They're really there, but. They're not overpowering, you know what I mean? They've not just like tried to smash a load of hops in, even though they've said that they've used more than twice what they use in the normal Jayapur. It's because they've used more malts and more, and there's more alcohol in it. Again, it's no good having twice as many hops that, that way, twice as many hops, and then not balancing it out with the malts. They've literally done that. They've just upped the game. This is one of the nicest, loveliest IPAs ever. It is beautiful. This is a crafted, absolutely beautifully put together, crafted, well thought of, designed beer. Um, and I do not know how much this would be as per can, but do you know what? I'd pay six pound a can for that, even though it's 330 mil. Um, I would happily pay that. This is absolutely magical, and it gets a without a doubt a complete firework show of a Speno 10 out of 10. Absolutely magical beer from Thornbridge. Thank you so much for watching this really long, quite oiled video i really appreciate it if i don't see you before happy new year um thank you so much for all your support i didn't realize this channel has not quite been going a year yet and um and, you know, last time i looked i was about 280 subscribers so thank you to everybody that subscribed and uh, supported this channel and i'm hoping to bring you some live feeds good Blimey, I, I feel sorry for you. Can you imagine a live feed with me? Anyway, actually, a live feed with me would be quite interesting to watch because I would mostly be listening to people and letting them speak. My waffle goes right the way down when I do things like that. So, yeah, I've got a few people in mind I want to do a live feed with. And uh, yeah, so watch this space. It will be coming. Take care, everybody. I've been Speno and much love. Seriously, just keep smiling. Live, laugh and love. And just if you've had a bad day today, tomorrow is another day. So take care, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Cheers.